Hello, Fight fans, and welcome to the Combat Challenge podcast. My guest today is Dangerous David Grant, a UFC athlete who, on his last two fights, the previous one was on the Usman v Masvidal card, where he fought Martin Day, ended up knocking Martin Day out and getting a 50 grand performance bonus and a broken jaw as well. And then on his last fight, which was on the Leon Edwards versus Bilal Muhammad fight, on that one he fought Jonathan Martinez, knocked him out as well, and once again got a performance bonus of $50,000. Mr. Dangerous, David Grant. David, thank you so thank much you for joining you. us, Cheers, my brother. Man. Did you like that introduction? Yeah, brilliant. Thank you. Very, yeah, very professional. Thank you. So, David, if we can talk about your last fight against Jonathan Martinez, yeah. what did you know about Jonathan and what was the game plan to break him down? I mean, we were watching him, I watched a few of his fights, uh, obviously he likes to, likes to stand, um, some good striking. He, he, he was a really good southpaw, he does, he, he does everything well from the southpaw stance and he works everything nicely, like uh, great foot position and, and, and he likes to come down, like he had the, like the straight left. The, the, the left knee and the left kick, they're like his main weapons. Okay. So, I mean, yeah, we were watching him and I thought everything, everything he do, does was really nice. Uh, but if I can just sort of nullify that side of his game, then I, then I thought I'd be able to go and get the win. And who were the strategic partners that helped you perform and get ready for... So, uh, yes, so my team, like my, my main coaches are like Alex Edmund, SPG South Shields, and then Matt Inman, SPG Manchester. So, um, so they were like, we were all sort of involved in the, in the lead up to the fight and, and all the strategies. Well, Alex Unlund was supposed to catch up with me today, but hopefully I'll catch up with, his, with him soon. And Matt Inman, I've had him on the podcast. Yes, yes, All you SBG guy. guys are, are really cool guys, man. Nice uh, one, I man. really appreciate you taking the time, especially after just having your fight and coming and doing this face-to-face with me, brother. Yeah, no I problem. feel like an exclusive coming on here. <laughs> so um, you go into the fight. First of all, who was in your corner? Let's talk about that. Yeah, so we had Alex Unlund, Matt Inman, and Cameron Hardy. Cameron's one of my students. Um, just signed a five-fight deal for Cage Warriors. Um, should be getting uh, announced. He's, he'll be fighting soon. Um, yeah, he's w- w- one of my top guys, so I brought him along as well. Wasn't he in the army or marines or something? He was the navy. Yeah, the navy, right. yeah. Cool. Eh? In the navy for around six years, I think. Because he's been on the podcast as well, and I think yeah. it was at the time where he was he, he gave up the the navy to move on. Yeah. And, uh, and do this. And is this what he does full time? Yeah, now? he's he's full time now. He's um, he, he's training twice a day constantly and um, got a few sponsors on board um, yeah doing really well he's been abroad with you twice hasn't he brother yeah yeah he was in Abu Dhabi as well yeah <laughs> he's living the dream that yeah time, right? yeah <laughs> I uh, when I did that podcast with him and he was like it was so surreal because for me I've got my coach in there and I'm in his corner and all these people are there and yeah. I'm thinking they're all looking at me they won't but you know <laughs> yeah, for him, exactly it must have been it. overwhelming right yeah yeah definitely but yeah he did a fantastic job and like that's why I bring him along he's a great trainer partner and uh, we really bounce off each other. And sometimes you need someone to give you that balance. So you'll have Matt and you've got Alex, you know, who are a bit more strategic side of stuff. Yeah. And then you'll have uh, someone like Cam, who it kind of just relaxes you. And yeah, is he similar sort of weight as yeah, you? Yeah, so or? I mean, he's, he's going down to bantamweight. Uh, so we'll be fighting at the same way. So his next fight's going to be a bantamweight. He's not, this will be his first fight at bantamweight. But I think, it, I think it's the, probably the right decision for him. And what was it before? Was he at featherweight? Feather, then? yeah. Right, okay. And because he's still filling out, man. Oh yeah, he's a, he's like he's a he's like a really muscly guy. Do you know what I mean? He's got um, he's got a great physique on him, and uh, but uh, but he, I think he'll be he'll be like a really really big strong bantamweight. Where he, he was probably like on the smaller side of the featherweights in the, right. when you get to the top end of the divisions. Do you know what I mean? For sure. So you get into the fight. If you can talk us uh, through the fight with Jonathan. Yeah, I mean, so I mean, I came out nice and relaxed. I was uh, really looking forward to it. Uh, I, I like the fact that I'm going to go and fight someone. And you know when you think, oh, he's just gonna, it's just going to be a stand-up war. Do you know what I mean? So I, I, I think I thrive off those sort of fights. Do you know what I mean? I like to get involved in the nitty-gritty of it. So just started off nice and relaxed. The plan was to try and like sort of beat him at his own game, trying to kick him on the outside. Uh, do you think that was his game to do the strike? Oh yeah, it? guaranteed. Right. That's, uh, that's, uh, that's sort of what he does. Do you know what I mean? He was just mm-hmm. wanted to, just wants you to stay like in his kicking range because that's his best thing. He's left kicking. He's, he's great with it. He, he, he was whipping it in nicely. Um, so I just so that was my plan, but then uh, a few of my kicks I was like throwing really hard low, and he checked them nicely. And one of them he checked right on me, like sort of like you know between my ankle and my shin, and it, yeah, it was painful. It was like and, and in the fight I, I could feel it was hurting. So so but but that was only to start off the fight anyway, and uh, and then it was to start stepping in my hands, 
and, and try and get him on the inside. I felt I felt like I was the I was the best striker. I felt like I had an advantage in in all areas. To be honest, without like no no disrespect to Jonathan at all, I just just watching him and studying him, I just felt like I was better in all areas. So I wasn't worried where the fight take place. So I, I was thinking maybe steal a few takedowns here and there if if, if, if the opportunity presented itself. Um, I, th- I felt like I was winning the first round. I felt like I was nice and comfortable. Yeah, I, I, I get a few low kicks off them, which like they landed, but they didn't really hurt. It wasn't affecting my movement or anything like that. And then just got clipped at the end of the first round. He, he caught us with a lovely shot. I think it was like an overhand left, sort of threw it really long as I was like trying to trying to work my way out. Caught us right on the end of the chin. I wasn't hurt at all. I, I went down, but I was literally like uh, n- not hurt at all. I was uh, straight on my game, and then finished the round. Just got my feet by the end of the round. Uh, went back to the corner. So by, by that time, yeah. Davey, how did you score that first round? I mean, I, I would have given it to him. I, I thought I was winning, but because of the knockdown, that was, that was definitely the most significant shot. And it, I wasn't winning by, by a huge margin, but I felt like I, I was winning up until that point. And then because he got the knockdown, I feel like he just, he just saw it. It was enough to win the round, definitely. So I felt like I was going into the second round, one round down. Uh, so I knew I had to pick it up. And, uh, and my foot was really hurting. I think I said to me corner in the middle, and I was, I was like, my foot's killing off, uh, just off getting the, the kicks checked. So that, that, so that was, uh, but I, I, to be fair, I was wanting to start stepping in with my hands on the second round anyway, so it didn't change the game plan much. And I, and I just came out really strong, really loosened up, felt nice and comfortable. And then I was thinking, I'm definitely, I remember thinking to myself, I'm definitely winning this round. So I keep going like this, and I'll just have to put it on him in the third to win the fight. And then about 10 seconds later, I, got, I, I knocked him out. And, um, and, and let's talk about this uh, knockdown, uh, this knockout, brother, because uh, you've done it a couple of times now. Talk yeah. about the combination that you got in with. Yeah, I mean we've been working it. Um, I, I've got some, I've got some sparring in with a few southpaws for this camp, like natural southpaws, and uh, and I just found it was landing really nicely. It's a combination what I throw anyway. I like, I like, I like to switch in on the hook. So switching in with that hook, right hook to the body, to try and expose them, and then coming back in with that overhand left, and then sort of like turning that one knuckle down like the Golovkin style hook. Do you know what I mean? Which, uh, yeah, it just worked nicely. I mean, we put a couple of videos on. I was drilling it, like, weeks before the fight, a couple of days before the fight, and then just the exact same one in the fight. So it's just, yeah, nice when things work out how you want. Well, I was just going to say that uh, I've seen those video clips, yeah. obviously, after the fight, and it's exactly how you plan. So rather than people thinking, oh, he's done it once and he tried it again, yeah. it was something that were premeditated, yeah. right? Oh, yeah, definitely. It was like, I just felt like it was going to work nicely. I felt like he was uh, a little bit open to it. To me, it looked like, I don't know if it looked like more of a straight or a hook, it was just kind of like, from a distance, it wasn't in time. Yeah, tight, it was like, know? it was just to, to sort of step in, so like, uh, it's sort of like, uh, like a loop and like sort of hook, yeah. do you know what I mean? But just really long and trying to set up that overhand from the switch, because yeah. obviously on the south part, our lead legs are close together, do you know what I mean? So it makes that distance to hit you with the power shot, uh, it's, a, it's like a lot further, you know, you've got to get past that lead hand. So when I switch in, then our legs were in the same stance, and then obviously my right leg and his right leg are forward, so you interlock a little bit better, so you can sort of land the heavier shots with your backhand. But I couldn't, the thing with Jonathan was, see I don't mind, I switch southpaw a lot, but every time I switch southpaw he was nailing me with that kick, and he does, I've seen him do it a few times, um, and, he, and he does it really nicely. You know, as soon as people switch southpaws, because southpaws usually uh, are worse against, or, or, or less comfortable against southpaws, the more orthodox they are. Say if you've got like one southpaw in the gym, then, uh, and ten, ten right-handers. Mm then you've got these 10 right-handers are getting one round every 10 with a southpaw. But that southpaw is getting no rounds with a southpaw. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So southpaws usually struggle against southpaws. And uh, that was going to be one of my tactics. And then watching his fight, as soon as anyone switches to southpaw, he nails them with that left kick. And because I don't stand in southpaw as my usual stance, I'm not as good at checking on that side as what I am with my left leg. You know, like oh, oh, the tie boxing days, your left leg is just sort of accustomed to it. As soon as anyone goes to throw a kick, my leg goes up without me thinking about it. But on my right side, or like when my right leads forward, uh, it, it's, I'm not as quick at that reactions. Do you know what I mean? And I think, uh, like there, you had to adjust on the fly bridge. But I'm sure you do that anyway. In yeah, exactly. It's got to be done. You know what I mean? You never know what's going to happen. Um, it's uh, yeah, it's just a game with so many possibilities. You've got to be ready for everything, haven't you? For sure. Now, when you dealt with Martin Day, right? You went to the side of the cage yeah. and you scanned and you found it in a while. Yeah. And you told him that you won that performance. On this one, did you say anything to Dana or, or did you feel like you'd done enough? What was your no, thought process? No, it, it was funny. Um, so I'm just running around the cage celebrating. I look out and I see Dana. I was like, ah, get in. And Dana <laughs> oh, just did went. did you see him? Yeah, Dana was sat there. Dana just went. Like, ah, <laughs> so I was like, that's what I did. So, yeah, I talked to Dana. Oh, Appreciate cool. it. And then how long did you, ha- oh, sorry, first of all, 
did you get any injuries from them? I mean, my foot. My foot was really bad afterwards. Uh, the medical team decided that I had to go straight to the hospital for an x-ray. So I was in the hospital for a little bit in Vegas and uh, I got it x-rayed and they said, look, there's no, like, no fractures or anything like that. So they just gave me some crutches and just sent me on my way. It was really swollen and really sore. It's still a bit sore now, to be honest. But um, nothing that's going to keep me out for too long. And then when you came back to the UK, so did you have to quarantine after the fight there or here? How did that work? No, well, we had to do like a uh, sort of, um, what was it, like just a couple of days. Or, or it was like, because the tests come back a lot quicker now. In Abu Dhabi it was like two days and then two days. So it was like four days altogether we were quarantined like before and after the flight. This one was just like for overnight, overnight really, when we got to the UFC fighter hotel. Um, and then just again, like just the normal government regulations on the way back. Now you've fought for these two fights were in UFC and they were in different countries. Yep. Tell me about the experience of both countries and, and how did it come across? I mean, it was, yeah, it was weird. It, I feel lucky to be able to travel the world still during the lockdown. I know everyone else is probably thinking, God, he's, good, he's getting away and we're all stuck in bloody old houses and stuff, do you know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, I, I did feel very lucky in that sort of sense. Abu Dhabi was surreal because it was like a... A whole section of the island cordoned off, like pure safe zone. Do you know and what I mean? And the flight, brother. It was we oh, The flight was brilliant. It was. It was nice to go and um, first class. You know what I mean? It was the first time I've been first class. And like this, we got went to Vegas. That one wasn't first class. It was commercial because there's hardly no one flying to Vegas. We had three seats, so it was like <laughs> I could still get myself laid out on the flight. You know what I mean? And um, I mean, it was just yeah, it was great. Vegas was obviously like I was there for about a week. We week and a little bit before the fight as well, so, so I could get to just walk around the strip and sort of do a little bit of sightseeing and stuff, do you know what I mean? Uh, before we got locked down into the, into the UFC Fighters Hotel. And it was, it was, it's nice, it's nice to be getting away, just, just seeing the world. I never thought that about this, you know, when I first started fighting, it was just like for fun. You know, it wasn't, I never thought I'd um, end up making money off it and, and then seeing the world, you know what I mean? But I think what you've been doing, brother, you, you've been consistently grinding and grinding and, you know, you've weathered whatever obstacles and hurdles you've had yeah. you've dealt with them and you smiled your way through it and now you're kind of reaping the rewards of the things that you've sowed right yeah yeah i mean yeah it's, it's a lifetime's worth of graft put into it you know and um, yeah things this this is like the best one i've been on in my career i feel like i'm i'm mixing it and starting to get into the to the top flight and uh, yeah it's all going good There'll be a lot of uh, people looking at this and thinking, oh, David Grant is doing really well, you know, he's had two great fights, two great knockouts, and uh, he's done performance of the night, he's got these bonuses, but they don't look at the days when David Grant may have struggled financially, oh, yeah, and things definitely. might have been, you know, on the down, right? Oh, definitely, like, I mean, everyone who, who gets into fighting knows, like, at, at first, it's, uh, you, you spend loads more money on your training camps than what you get, than what you get paid for fighting, and, uh, and you've got, in a training camp you've got just as many good days as bad days you know you've got some days you get up and you're absolutely beat up and you just got to go and push it to hit that grind get to the gym you've got to miss out on all the social events and things like that it's a it's a hard life you know it's like it, it's it's not like a job where you come off after your nine to five and switch off you know what i mean so when you're at home you still got to do your stretching or whatever you've still got to make sure that you're eating healthy you know you're not enjoying yourself at the weekends you it's, it is, it's a pure lifestyle, it's not just like, not just a, any normal job where you just switch off at the end of the day. And like you said, the, the, there's days where, you know, you, you, you'll have a good session, there's days you won't, and mentally you've got to be strong, because sometimes, yeah. brother, you're the hammer and sometimes you're the nail, that's right? That's it, that's it, especially with the, when you go around and you're, like, you're training with some of the best guys in the world, it's got to be, uh, it, it, it's, it's got to be like, give or take, you know what I mean? For sure, brother. Now. There's other people who are lower down uh, than you in, uh, on this professional scene. What advice would you give them, David? You know, that they wanna, they, they've finished the amateur, they started their professional career. From your knowledge and experience, what would you cascade down to them? I mean, you've just got to, you've got to stick at it. You've got to be sensible, train smart. That's the biggest thing. I, I, I mean, I, obviously, I'm, I mean, I'm getting on anyway, but I used to train way too hard, sparring. Like one like, Galea Silver sort of sparring? <laughs> yeah like sometimes four or five times a week. We thought we were doing good. We really, really thought that we were doing good. Now I'm looking back and I'm thinking it's just brain damage material. You know, like the way we used to spar. It was way too hard. Training sometimes, I used to train sometimes four times a day because I used to think that the harder the better. That was the old mentality. Now it's not the case. Do you know what I mean? Train smart. Get your head down and put in the graft. 
Would you suggest uh, maybe looking at uh, a management team behind you or, or would you kind of ask people to, to go on their own way for the first couple of fights and then see if they yeah, can get managed? Yeah, I, I mean, I see sometimes like people getting them managed, they're like amateur fighters and stuff and like you just fighting on the local scene, I don't think you need that sort of thing, do you know what I mean? I think you just need to be getting active, that's the main thing. And uh, whether that's up, even if you're doing like the interclubs and things like that, you know, like stuff like that, just sort of, sort of just getting a bit, just getting experience, you know, putting the time in, not, and don't fixate yourself to winning and losing either, you know, it's, uh, you're going to win and you're going to lose, you should be getting those sort of fights out the way anyway when you're, when you're amateur, you see a lot of guys padding an amateur record now. They can in them, aren't they? Yeah, and it's like, I mean... It depends what you're, what you're in it to do, you know, like if you want to get better then you want to test yourself at the amateur level so you're ready for when, because there's no point in getting a brilliant amateur record and then having to fight legit guys when you go pro and that be the first time that you've had to actually dig deep. Because you'll get exposed, won't yes, you? Yes, exactly, and sometimes in a fight you've got to dig deep, you've got to, you've got to, be, you've got to go, come back from behind or whatever, do you know what I mean? And so if you put yourself in, in that place in amateur, see amateurs to me is just experience, you know, it's like, it, it's just like practice really. For when you turn pro, and then when you turn pro, it's a hell of a lot more serious. Like the, the UFC don't go and looking at anyone's amateur record. You could have twenty in all an amateur, but it's the pro record what they're going to look at. No one looks at an amateur record. Um, so you've just got to be sensible about what you do when you're amateur, so you get that sort of experience you need to go and take on the top flight in the in the professional leagues. I did a uh, podcast with uh, Paul Sutherland, who's a coach of Trojan Free Fighters, and he was saying the same that he wants his fighters to get at least nine, ten, eleven. Genuine amateurs go through the hole trying to do the bit of weight cutting, a 50-50 chance of winning or losing, yeah. so that when they springboard into the professional scene, nothing catches them off guard and they're ready to, to kind of get their career off going, right? Yeah, that's it, definitely. I mean, um, yeah, you want to you, you want to get nice and experienced and like sort of get in some good fights, maybe even lose a couple of fights, you know? Like, I think you learn a hell of a lot more from losing than what you ever do from winning. You know, it's, um, it's crazy. But, uh, sure, you just need to ask Martin Day or Jonathan Martinez. Tell you. <laughs> so, uh, what's next for David Grant, my brother? Uh, have, have you got anything in the pipeline, or which event going to be on? Just try, um, starting like I'm just back training, back eating healthy, back on the bandwagon sort of thing. I've had a couple of weeks where I've just sort of you know, you know, after you fought, it's it's nice to be able to treat yourself. I don't like to, I, I like to be able to treat myself after the fight. And when you like, talk about treating, brother, is there any restaurant that you would uh, recommend going uh, to? Well, yeah, I can think of a good one in Spedimo called Cavello's. Yeah, that'd be a great shout. <laughs> Hopefully we get them back open in the next couple of weeks as well, with, uh, depending on the governments. And then, um, has UFC suggested anything timescale-wise? Not or? yet, no. I mean, uh, as far as I'm concerned, a nice quick turnaround. Um, I'm sure they'll get me back out soon. It's, it's nice to be able to go straight back into training. You know, like, obviously, uh, the, the, with fights, I've had some bad injuries in fights and, and things like that. Like, the last one, obviously, broken jaw puts you out for ages. So it's nice to, because uh, I've got a bit of momentum behind me now, obviously, on three-fight win streak, a couple of knockouts in the UFC, which is, like, um, fantastic. So I just want to keep building on that now and get straight back out and get as active as I can this year, get another two fights in at least. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. Maybe maybe a different combination for the knockout, brother, because the next person will be thinking, this yeah, guy's done we'll it twice. See, I don't it. want to be the hat-trick. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah that, we'll be working on some new stuff. David, thank you so much for taking no the time out and uh, you know for, uh, uh, inviting us to your gym so we could come and do this face-to-face -face podcast, which is an exclusive. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I look forward to having you on again, my brother. No worries. Nice thank one. You. Thanks very much. Cheers. It's been emotional. Thanks, man. Oh. Thanks.